Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Today we're going to continue our next sub-chapter in chapter 5 which is Fire and Explosion Part 1. Basically, these are the type of laws for large hydrocarbon chemical plant accident. As you can see, 29% contributed from fires, which is second from fires. And fires and explosion contribute the highest, which is 42%. What we need to know in, in terms of fire. So to prevent accident resulting from fire and explosion, we need to familiar with the fire and explosion properties the nature of the fire, the procedures to reduce fire and explosion hazard. This is the uh, triangular diagram of normal uh, fire triangular diagram, which is in order of fire to, to take place, there is three main parameter need to, to, to occur at the same time. Number one is the oxidant, which is the oxidizer gases, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, or liquid, hydrogen peroxide or solid metal peroxide or nitride. Second is the fuel. Gasoline, acetone, plastic, wood, gases. And the third one is the ignition source, which is spark, flame, static electricity. If one of this is not exist or being or being prevented, there will be no fire will occur. So this is a triangular diagram, a common triangular diagram of a fire. A combust what is a combustion process? Fire or combustion is a chemical reaction which is a substance combined with the oxygen and heat is released. So it's called exothermic oxidation. Combustion always occurs in a vapor phase and liquids are volatile and solid are decomposed into vapor upon heating. Right? I'm going to go fast with this one. You can read just read through it. Next is a spark. When you have a bulk gas mixture is heated up to its ignition temperature, so it will go for uh, when you have a spark, will create a fire. Furthermore, if a bulk is heated to auto ignition temperature, where is a fixed temperature above adequacy energy is available in the environment to provide ignition source. If there is an auto ignition temperature, it will also create a fire. Bigger decision of the rate of energy release. So this is a fire release energy where it is slow, explosion release. And fire also can result with explosion. And explosion can re result from fire. So they are vice versa. Fire can lead to explosion. Explosion can lead to fire. These are the flammability characteristic of liquid. Number one is the flash point of liquid. The, what is the flash point? It is the lowest temperature at which a liquid gives off enough vapor to form an ignitable mixture in air. The key word is the lowest temperature. Enough liquid, enough vapor. When you have enough vapor form at the lowest temperature, it will form a fire. At the flash point, the vapor will burn out only briefly because inadequate vapor is produced to maintain combustion. Fire point is the lowest temperature at which a vapor above liquid is going to burn once ignited. This is a apparatus in order to determine uh, a flammable characteristic or a flash point of a chemical substance. You have a Bunsen, you have a liquid that you want to test what is the flash point. You immerse it with a, with a thermometer and you have a test flame applicator with flame. When the heat is continuously heating the chemical over here, so at one point, it will release a vapor, right? So this vapor, the flame will ignite the vapor. So the first flame occurs here is called the flash point temperature, which is recorded at this thermometer. So this is how you determine a flash point of a chemical. 
flash point temperature for pure printing correlate well with the boiling point. If I have a flash point, it will correlate with the boiling point of the liquid provided this is the, the correlation. You have a flash point and this is the correlation. A, B and C are a constant and T, B is a boiling point of the material. So how do you get? If you have a boiling point of a material, you have the constant, you can calculate the flash point. Example, these are uh, the, uh, the, 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 the value for each, for the constant for various chemical group, A, B and C, like hydrocarbon, alcohol, amines, and so on. So you know the volume, if you know the volume point of each of these element, you know the constant, you can calculate the flash point by using this equation. Flash point can also be estimated for multi-component mixture. If only one component is flammable and if the flash point of the flammable component is known. All right, if you have a multi-component mixture that you want to know the flash point, because if you're pure mixture, you already know it's flash point. However, if that component is in a multi, is mixed with other mixture, so the flash point will change. How do you determine the new flash point? Yeah, this, this is an example. You have a methanol which has a flash point of 54 Fahrenheit. And the vapor pressure at this temperature is 62 millimeter mercury. What is the flash point of the solution? What is the new flash point of the solution? Containing, you have 75% methanol and 25% water by weight. So you tabulate in the, in the table. You have 25 and 75% by weight. This is the molecular weight. So you calculate the mole. Weight over the molecular weight, you get 1.4 mole for water and 2.34 mole for methanol, and you get a mole, mole fraction. Okay, next, how do you do? By using Raoult's law. If this is Raoult's law. You need to know the new vapor pressure, which is P saturated. X is the mole fraction. Okay, you have the new mole fraction of methanol, and this is the old. Uh, vapor pressure, not the old, I'm sorry, the the pure vapor pressure, not the mixture vapor pressure. So in order to know this, you divided 62 is the pure vapor pressure divided with how much methanol exists in the mixture. For example, in this case, we have 0 0.63 mole fraction of methanol. So you get the new vapor pressure, which is at 98.4 millimeter mercury. So using the graph of vapor pressure versus temperature, the, the flash point of resolution is 20 degree, 20.5 20, degrees Celsius or 68. So by using this 98.4, by using this graph, so 98.4 is roughly over here. Then you get the new flash point is around 20. 0.5 degree Celsius. If you compare from the, the pure methanol, previously it is at 54 Fahrenheit. Okay. And in the mixture, it becomes 58.9 Fahrenheit. So it becomes higher. So the flash point becomes higher in a mixture. Right, so this is how you calculate a flash point for a mixture. Right, I'll stop here and we'll continue for the next part of the lecture.